Well, hey guys, there is still a ton that people are getting absolutely wrong about skincare and about protecting their skin from the sun. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the most common misconceptions that Americans have about sun protection. The AAD, American Academy of Dermatology, conducts a survey every year of US adults' attitudes on sun protection. So we're gonna go over that. We're gonna find out what people are still getting wrong. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I post skincare content here pretty consistently on YouTube. If that is of interest to you, consider subscribing, hit the bell button so that you're made aware whenever I post a new video. If you like TikTok or Instagram, consider following me there as well. I'm pretty consistent on those platforms too. So the American Academy of Dermatology did a recent survey in 2021 of over a thousand adults in the U.S. about their attitudes towards sun protection. Good news, 82% of the adults surveyed said that sun protection was more important to them now than it was five years ago. Yay! So that's great. It means that people are more aware of the need and the importance of protecting their skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. I always see comments in my videos like, oh, if I had only known this when I was in my 20s or 30s, back then we didn't know. We would go out and oil ourselves with baby oil and try and get burnt to a crisp to try and get a tan, all this stuff, and now we're paying the consequences much later. So that's good. People have a better understanding now how important it is to protect themselves from the sun. However, this survey revealed that people are still getting a lot wrong. Interestingly though, 62% of respondents rated their sun protection knowledge as excellent to good. Here's the problem. People are still getting a lot wrong about sun protection, but they know it's important and they think they're better at it than they actually are. <laughs> 63% of adults surveyed reported getting a tan. That is an increase of 9% up from 2020. And when you get a tan, that is an indicator that you're not protecting your skin from the sun. People have this idea still, it's a false fixed belief that we need to break, that getting a tan is healthy. It's the, you know, people think, oh, I didn't burn, I tanned, so I'm okay. No. Any amount of sunburn and any amount of suntan, both are a form of skin injury. Basically, when you get a burn or a tan, that is a reflection that the skin cells have damaged DNA. And over time, that accumulates, leading to skin cancers. The more times you get burnt, the more times you tan throughout your lifetime, that is accumulation of DNA damage that can and does lead to skin cancers, which are super duper common not only here in the US, but worldwide. 30% reported getting a sunburn. That is an increase up from 25% in 2020. That is a huge jump. This is a problem. People know they're supposed to be protecting themselves from the sun, but perhaps they're missing out on the idea that sunscreen alone is not enough. And this is a slippery slope. People get overconfident in, oh, I'm putting sunscreen on. And what happens is they stay out too long and the data is showing us that in this survey. People are staying out long enough to get enough UV exposure that they're tanning more and they're getting more sunburns. This is not good. Tanning and sunburn equals skin injury by virtue of DNA damage that cumulatively leads to skin cancer. The more times you do this, the more times you burn and tan, the greater your risk of skin cancer. So this is what we're trying to prevent with sun protective behaviors. And wearing sunscreen, while it can protect from a burn, if you put it on and you're overconfident with your application and you stay out too long or you don't reapply and you get a burn, you're getting more UV. 67% of adults surveyed reported the belief that SPF 30 offers twice the protection from the sun as SPF 15, false. The SPF number tells you how good a sunscreen is at protecting you from UVB. And a higher SPF doesn't mean like double the protection. So SPF 15 will block out 93% of UVB rays from the sun and an SPF 30 will block out 97% of UVB rays from the sun. If, and this is a big if, you apply enough sunscreen. You have to apply two milligrams of sunscreen per centimeter squared of surface area. And I know you're like, what the heck is that? Basically a really thick layer. Yeah, you need to be applying two milligrams of sunscreen per centimeter squared of surface area of sun exposed skin. That is a pretty thick layer. And the studies show that people just don't apply enough of it. So what happens is because people are putting on too scanty a layer, the layers too thin, 
and or they've got skip areas, they end up with an, a much lower SPF than what is on the label. For example, an SPF 15 sunscreen in real world use, it ends up being something at most closer to an SPF five or four, which is really not enough. In order for sunscreen to work, you have to apply enough of it. You have to apply it to all sun exposed areas. You know, people frequently skip areas like their ears or their back or their scalp and you have to apply a sufficient quantity of it and you need to reapply it. Sunscreen rubs off and so by reapplying, it helps to touch it up where it's rubbed off, but it also helps address the fact that initially you likely underapplied it. So how much do you need? You need one ounce, which is roughly a shot glass to cover the body. As far as for the face alone, it's about a quarter of a teaspoon, but I always tell people to apply a couple of layers. So a quarter of a teaspoon applied twice, that's going to be roughly half a teaspoon. That tends to be about right. You also want a quarter of a teaspoon for the neck, applied twice, another half teaspoon. Ultimately that ends up being a teaspoon amount. 65% of respondents said they rarely remember to reapply. I understand it's tough to reapply sunscreen. And I often get this question, do we need to reapply? Why do we need to reapply? The reason you need to reapply sunscreen throughout the day is because first of all, some of it rubs off. And second of all, you likely don't apply enough to begin with, and by reapplying, you deposit more sunscreen on the surface of the skin, you're more likely to get adequate coverage. That's what the studies show, that by reapplying, people are get reach a, a point where they have a better overall SPF on the, on the surface of the skin. Now, I understand that when you're indoors most of the day, you're like, do I need to be reapplying? Uh, you know, it's tricky, whatever. But when you are outside, the rule of thumb is reapply sunscreen every two hours while you're outside side and if you get in the water you definitely want to reapply sunscreen as soon as you get out. I encourage you to use water resistant but even with water resistant sunscreen once you get out of the water you need to reapply sunscreen. So just be aware of that that the sunscreen is going to be really helpful it's going to be part of the sun protective package but there are there are limitations. I want to I want to interject this point too. People get super overwhelmed they're like oh god there are all these things but remember you guys this is your largest organ so there are a lot of things that you need to to take into account here in order to protect it and keep it healthy for the long run. So the sunscreen is a major piece of it. You've got to apply enough of it. You've got to reapply it and you have to be consistent with it. Higher SPF might actually end up being better for you, the studies show. Studies show that choosing a higher SPF sunscreen, while on paper it doesn't make much of a difference in terms of its ability to block out those UVB rays. I already told you 15 is 93% of UVB is blocked out and 30 is 97%. Once you start getting higher, I mean, we're splitting hairs. But in reality, based on how people apply, well then higher SPF is better. Here's another thing that people are not clear on when it comes to UV rays from the sun and sunscreen. SPF is telling you how good the sunscreen is at protecting you against UVB rays from the sun that burn the skin. But it tells you nothing about the other type of ultraviolet radiation that reaches your skin and leads to skin cancer, and that is UVA. So in a sunscreen, number, it tells you about the ability of it to protect you from a burn, but it doesn't really give you much information about the ability of a sunscreen to protect you from those UVA rays. And that's really important because people with a deeper skin tone that tan easily, they are not going to necessarily be under the impression that they need to be wearing sunscreen because all the messaging around sunscreen is about protecting you from a burn, which doesn't necessarily impact people with a deeper skin tone as much. Sure, they can burn, but it's not as common. But their skin does deepen in color, and that, again, is a sign of skin injury upon sun exposure because it's those UVA rays. And sunscreens that are labeled broad spectrum can protect from those UVA rays. So it's really important for people of all skin tones to protect their skin from the sun because those UVA rays, I mean, that's really, really what is hitting people in a way that they're blithely unaware of. That's really a, a major driving force for skin cancer. So much so that when sunscreens first came out, they really didn't have any ingredients in them that protected against those UVA rays. They just had ingredients to protect from the UVB rays, the burning rays. As a result, it encouraged people to stay out 
longer than they ordinarily would because they weren't burning as easily, but they were still getting so much UVA. That's part of the reason why we think that there may be a bit of a correlation between an increase in, in skin cancers with the advent of sunscreens, is that early on sunscreens did not protect from those UVA rays, whereas now uh, those at least that are labeled broad spectrum should be protecting you from those UVA rays, provided you apply the sunscreen correctly and enough of it. Here's another thing people didn't realize is that 43% of respondents reported they were unaware of the fact that shade offers some protection against UV rays from the sun. That's right. This is why in sun protective messaging, we always tell you to seek out shade because shaded structures can block UV rays as well. Now, now it's going to vary depending on the type of shade structure. If you're gonna go sit under a tree, that's gonna help, but it's not gonna protect you as much as being under a roof. Some sun is gonna come through the leaves and stuff, but getting under a tree is you know, gonna help and protect you a little bit. Tree plus sunscreen is better than sunscreen alone. A roofed porch plus sunscreen, better than sunscreen alone, better than sitting on the porch with no sunscreen. Why? UV rays, they're gonna still come in through the sides and they're gonna be scattered up off of surfaces. They're gonna bounce off of reflective surfaces and hit you on all angles. So you kind of have to think about that as well. When you're seeking out shade, it alone is definitely not enough. You definitely can burn by being under an umbrella. Speaking of umbrella, the ability of an umbrella to offer protection is going to depend on the fabric. Umbrellas are great, but like sunscreen, you don't just want to rely on an umbrella because the UV rays are going to bounce off of reflective surfaces, sand. Studies actually show that an umbrella alone is inadequate at protecting from a sunburn, but it, and com it combined with sunscreen, those two together are better than doing either alone. Especially if you are outside at the beach where you're getting a lot of, where there's a lot of UV exposure. So that, that definitely helps. Size obviously matters, you know, a little tiny umbrella is not going to offer as much coverage as a big umbrella. The other thing to factor in when we're evaluating how good shade is, is proximity to other shade structures. So a single tree is not going to offer as much sun protection as being in a forest full of trees. Those other neighboring trees, they're going to block out some additional UV and protect you even further than just a solitary tree. All right, so it's great that 82% of people realize now that sunscreen is important as opposed to five years ago where they had no clue. That is fantastic, but they're getting a lot about it wrong. And so just knowing that sun protection is important is not enough if you're not doing it right. Doing it wrong and being overconfident, you actually might be putting yourself at even greater risk. You may end up staying out too long because you're too confident in your sunscreen. As a result, you get too much UV exposure, increase your risk for skin cancer and sun damage. Current estimates are that one in five Americans will receive a skin cancer diagnosis sometime in their lifetime. And if you'll recall back from my videos on risk factors for skin cancers, I'll link that down below. Having one skin cancer means you're more likely to make more down the road. And this year it's estimated that 99,780 new cases of the deadliest type of skin cancer, melanoma, will be diagnosed. and. Uh, 7,650 people will die from melanoma this year. So it's a serious, it's something to take serious. There are multiple types of skin cancer triggered by UV rays and protecting your skin from the sun is imperative to reduce your risk of skin cancer. Sun protection also protects against accelerated skin aging. People need to realize that biologic age does not always correlate to chronologic age. You can be biologically much older than the number of candles on your birthday cake. One way to push your biologic skin age well beyond your chronologic age, the number of candles on your birthday cake, is to get unprotected sun exposure. It's just a fact. UV rays are well established to cause skin cancer. They damage the DNA in your skin cells. They suppress the immune system in your skin, impairing the ability to heal from damage. And that's what leads to skin cancers and prominent accelerated onset of skin aging in the form of wrinkles, discoloration, loss of elasticity, impaired wound healing. Um, all right, so in general, the recommendations are when you are enjoying the outdoors, seek shade, avoid 
being outdoors as best you're able during the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's typically when UV rays from the sun are most intense. And if you are gonna be out then, then be really mindful and definitely seek out shade, either in the form of an umbrella or you know a porch, a covered structure. In my opinion, public health measures should include providing shaded structures for people, especially in parks and playgrounds where children play, because the majority of sun damage that contributes to skin aging is acquired in early life. And we can save ourselves a lot of money in the long run by minimizing skin cancers by protecting our children from unnecessary UV exposure by giving them shaded structures to play under. Um, wear sun protective clothing. You know, sunscreen is great, but it's not enough. So wear sun protective clothing, sleeves, hats, pants. Definitely wear sunglasses to protect your eyes and the skin around your eyes. And I've got a video on the best kind of things to look out for in terms of clothing for sun protection, talking about different fabrics. You can always look for fabrics that are labeled UPF uh, to really ensure good protection. Basically just kind of boils down to the density and the weave and how the material is made to ideally block out 98% of UV rays. But yeah, um, don't just rely on, don't just rely on sunscreen alone. You will inevitably overexpose yourself. When choosing a sunscreen pick one that is labeled broad spectrum that tells you it will protect you against both the burning uvb rays as well as uva rays the ones that penetrate really deeply lead to skin cancer and uh, wrinkles and all that kind of stuff and i recommend choosing a sunscreen that is at least spf 30 while technically on paper spf 15 should be more than adequate we know people don't apply enough and so if you choose an SPF 15, you end up somewhere closer to SPF 3. That's not enough. So I say 30 or higher. And ideally, especially if you're going to be outside, choose one that's water resistant. It will hold up a little bit better with sweat, not run into your eyes as much, and is better when you are in the water. If you've got a water resistant sunscreen on, ensure you at least have something protecting you while you are physically in the water. Again, reapply when you get out. People don't realize this, but when you are in the water, whether it be the ocean or the pool or the lake or whatever, that is often when you are getting sunburned because you're cool in there. You don't realize that your skin is burning. The sunscreen rubs off, comes off in the water. You're getting too much UV exposure. So try and you know, be mindful of how much time you're spending physically in the water and get out and reapply or wear things like a rash guard. You know, they make swimsuits that have long sleeves. These are all good ways to go further in protecting your largest organ. Let me know in the comments, did you learn something from this video? Um, don't be too confident in your sun protection. You know, it, it's only as good as you are at using it and reining in these other behaviors. I hope this video was informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.